Hey everyone. So last year I did a video review of SunFounder's 37 sensors and modules kit for the Raspberry Pi and Arduino. Since then, SunFounder has come out with an updated version of the kit, so I thought I'd review that one too. I'm going to go through the kit and talk a little about each of the modules it includes. Let me just open it up. Here's the outer packaging. Let me open up the box here. Got some package inserts. It looks like they've included a GPIO expander in this version. That's nice. Here's the instruction manual. It says the kit is for the Raspberry Pi Model B+, but these modules can be used for any Raspberry Pi. Looks like there are descriptions of all the modules. The instructions look a lot better than the first version. They have schematics and wiring diagrams. Looks nice. They also included example code. One of the complaints I heard about the first kit was that the instructions were pretty inadequate. But it looks like they've totally rewritten the manual and it looks a lot more detailed. Let me put this stuff away and we'll start going through the kit. All right. On top here, we've got a bunch of jumper wires. These wires have clip on connectors on one end. So I'm guessing the modules will have the female end of the connection. The other ends have male pin connectors. Those will fit in a breadboard. Here's the male to female ribbon cable. All right, let's have a look at the sensors. What do we have here? Okay, this is the obstacle avoidance sensor. It uses infrared to detect when an object is in front of it. The clear LED transmits infrared, and if there's an object in front of the sensor that can reflect infrared light, it's picked up by the receiver. It works best if the object is white, like a wall, since dark colors tend to absorb infrared light. This one is the rotary encoder. It's similar to a potentiometer, but it has unlimited rotation. Potentiometers vary resistance when you rotate the knob, but rotary encoders take the position of the knob and convert it to a digital signal. 
A lot of times they're used as controls for LCD menu navigation. This is the DS1302 real-time clock module. It gives you the date and time. It'll output the current second, minute, day, month, and year. The metal cylinder you see there is the crystal. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have a real-time clock. It gets the date and time over the internet. So this will be nice to have if you don't have access to the internet. This is an RGB LED. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. And this LED will light up with each color depending on which pin you connect to ground. There should be four pins, one for VCC and one for ground for each color. This one's just a simple potentiometer. Lots of uses for that, of course. This right here is a tilt switch. There's a little conductive ball inside the blue casing. And when it tilts to either side, the ball bridges the connection between two contacts. The module outputs a high signal when the sensor is level, but when it's tilted, the signal goes low. This is the photo interrupter. Inside that black bracket, there's an infrared LED and a photo transistor. When something passes between them, the light is interrupted and the module outputs a signal. They can be used to measure the speed of rotating objects or to detect if an object is in a specific position. All right, here we have the tracking sensor. This is sometimes used in robotics to keep a vehicle following a black line. The blue LED is an infrared transmitter, and the black thing is an infrared receiver. When the infrared light hits the black line, there's less reflected light picked up by the receiver. The sensor outputs a high level when it's over black. When the infrared light hits a white color, it's reflected back into the receiver and the module outputs a low signal. The trim pod adjusts the sensitivity. Alright, looks like this is the read switch. Read switches detect magnetic fields. When there's no magnetic field present, the signal is kept high. When the sensor detects a magnetic field, the signal output is switched to low. Read switches aren't very sensitive. The magnet needs to be about 1.5 centimeters or closer for it to be detected. All sensors are a lot more sensitive. This is the active buzzer. It makes a buzzing sound when you send a voltage to the signal pin. Passive buzzers are a little bit different, but I'll tell you more about that when we get to the passive buzzer module. This is the thermistor module. A thermistor is an analog temperature sensor. 
Its resistance varies as the temperature changes. I have some tutorials on the Circuit Basics blog about using thermistors and how they work, so check that out if you want to. This is the Hoff switch module. The Hoff switch outputs a variable voltage depending on the strength of a magnetic field. The Hoff switch is turned on when there are no magnetic fields, and a high signal voltage is output at the signal pin. When it detects a magnetic field, the switch is turned off and the signal voltage goes low. This looks like the dual color LED. The LED lights up with either red or green. This can be useful as a battery charge indicator. Okay, so this is the auto flash LED module. It alternates flashes of seven different colors. All you have to do is give it power. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's two ground pins, but you just need to connect one of them. This is the flame sensor module. It has analog and digital outputs. Sensitivity is adjusted with the trim pot right there. Here's the PS2 joystick module. It has two directional axes and a push button. Each axis is a variable resistor. When the joystick is pushed to either side, the resistance increases. These are usually used in gaming projects or as controllers for robots and remote control vehicles. Here's the 5 volt relay module. This basically lets you use 5 volt signals to switch higher voltages. You can use it with a Raspberry Pi or Arduino to turn on and off household appliances. I have a tutorial on the blog for making an Arduino controlled power outlet using one of these. It's pretty useful. Here's the button module. That's pretty self-explanatory.
This is the sound sensor module. It's an electet microphone connected to an amplifier. It'll output a voltage between 0 and 5 volts, depending on how loud the sound is. This is the temperature sensor module. It has the DS18B20 digital temperature sensor. This is a really accurate thermometer. Here's an ultrasonic rangefinder. This will tell you the distance from the sensor to an object. It uses the speed of sound reflecting off of an object to calculate the distance. The ICs on the back here generate the sound pulse and amplify the reflected pulse. This is the analog hall switch. This also detects magnetic fields, but unlike the first one, this can measure the strength of the magnetic field. It can be used to calculate the distance to a magnet and can even be used to detect the electrical current in a wire. The trim pot lets you adjust the sensitivity. This is the infrared receiver. It's the receiving module for the remote control that's included in the kit. It uses a 1838B infrared receiver. This looks like the MPU 6050. This is a three axis gyroscope and accelerometer. It measures tilt and rotation. They included a couple eight pin headers with it too, which is nice. One 90 degree header. and one straight header. All right, looks like this is the barometer module. It uses the BMP-180 barometer. The BMP-180 measures air pressure and temperature. There's even a way you can use it as an altimeter. They're usually paired with gyros and accelerometers to get precise location data. This right here is the humidure sensor. It's a DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. DHT11 outputs digital temperature and humidity readings. The nice thing about it is that it doesn't need to be calibrated. This would be good for weather projects or home environmental control projects.
The next module is the analog temperature sensor. This is more like a temperature controlled switch. You can set a threshold temperature with the trim pot, and once the temperature passes the threshold, the digital output drops to low. It also has an analog output, which you should be able to get actual temperature readings from. This is the mercury switch module. A mercury switch is a type of tilt sensor. There's a small drop of mercury inside the glass bulb. It runs along a conductive track, and when the sensor is tilted one way, the mercury bridges the connection between the track and another conductor. When the sensor is tilted the other way, the mercury rolls away and the contacts are open. It's kind of hard to see the contacts here. Careful with this one though, you don't want the glass to break and release the mercury. Mercury is toxic, so never touch it with bare hands. Okay, so this is the touch switch. When you touch the contacts, the sensor acts as a flip-flop switch. So if you touch it once, the switch will change states and hold that state until it's touched again. The output signal changes between low and high with each touch. This is the photoresistor module. Photoresistors detect light. The resistance changes with varying amounts of ambient light. The resistance decreases when more light hits it. You can use these to turn on or off devices in the daytime or nighttime. This is an analog to digital converter. It uses the PCF8591 IC. The PCF8591 has four analog inputs, and the digital output is sent via the I2C bus. Next up, we have the passive buzzer. Passive buzzers won't make a sound by just sending a supply voltage to it. For that, you need an active buzzer. Instead, passive buzzers need a frequency signal, like a square wave, to generate sound. It works a lot like a speaker. This little guy here is the laser emitter module. It generates a red laser beam just like you find in laser pointers. All it needs is a three to five volt supply. There's lots of fun stuff you can do with this. And this module is the gas sensor. 
This is an MQ-2 gas sensor. It detects combustible gases like natural gas, smog, and volatile vapors. The higher concentration of gas, the greater the value it will output. This right here is the raindrop sensor. The trim pot allows you to adjust the sensitivity. It's got conductive traces running in a grid. The sensor detects the increase in conductivity caused by water drops between the traces. It also comes with extension wires, so I guess you can keep the plate outside and keep the sensitive electronics covered. There are analog and digital outputs too. Okay, so I guess this is the GPIO expander. This one's nice because all the pins are labeled. Here's an LCD display. Oh, and it has an I2C backpack. That's cool. I2C is nice because it lets you connect it with only four wires. And here's the ribbon cable for the GPIO expander. The red part plugs into the breadboard. This is the infrared remote control we can use with the infrared receiver module. And here's a breadboard. All right, that's everything. This is a really nice kit, especially if you're just starting out. There are so many modules. It's going to keep you busy for a long time. I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can buy this on Amazon in case you're interested. And I hope you liked it. So, all right, well, talk to you later. Bye-bye.